I've started it, Lena. Okay, so let's start now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third season webinar series on race splitting multiple access in 2023. And this webinar series is organized by IEEE CompSoc WTC Special Interest Group of RSMA. Today, this is our first webinar of this season, and it's our great honor today to have Professor Daniel Da Costa from Technology Innovation Institute Abu Dhabi as our distinguished guest speaker. So first of all, please allow me to make a brief introduction of Daniel. Daniel received his bachelor degree in telecommunications from the Military Institute of Engineering in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 20, uh, 2003. And he received his master and the PhD degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Campinas in 2006 and 2008 respectively. His PhD thesis was awarded the best thesis in electrical engineering by the Brazilian Ministry of Education in 2009. And from 2008 to 2009, he was a postdoctoral research fellow with uh, University of Quebec in Canada. And from 2010 to 2022, he was with the Federal University of Syria, Brazil. And since 2022, he is principal researcher of the Digital Science Research Center at TII. And this is a global research center and the applied pillar of Abu Dhabi's Advanced Technology Research Council. He's currently the editor-in-chief of the IEEE Communications Letters and has acted as symposium or trapped co-chairs in numerous IEEE flagship conferences. All right, so before Daniel's talk, I would like to remind the rules of our webinar. During the 15-minute talk, please keep yourself muted, and you can type your questions in the chat box. And after the talk, we will have a 10-minute Q&A session. You can unmute yourself to raise questions directly, or I can choose two to five questions from the chat box. Okay, so enjoy the talk, and let me stop sharing my screen. Daniel, you can start sharing your screen now. Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Lina, for the nice introduction. And thank you, uh, the organizers, for inviting me to, to open the third season of this webinar series, series on rich speed and multiple access. So it's a great honor for me uh, to deliver this talk. And today, my talk uh, will be entitled Red Speed in Multiple Access Recent Advance from a Poly Polarimetric Perspective. So basically, uh, I will show uh, how uh, the polarization domain can be explored to further boost uh, the performance of uh, red speed in multiple access systems. So, as mentioned, I'm currently a principal researcher at uh, Technology Innovation Institute, uh, TII, in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And this is my website. And if you want uh, to get further information or if you want to contact me, feel free to, to drop me a message. Okay, just let me uh, put on it. Okay, so uh, the outline of my presentation, basically it will be divided in four parts. In the first part, I will brief motivated and I will discuss the work principles related to rate speed and multiple access. And I would like to give credit uh, to, to this, uh, to this uh, special interest group on rate splitting, uh, which is organizing this webinar series because we can find the main materials. So uh, many of uh, these informations we are presenting the next, the first slide, we can collect in, at this link. The, thus, after the first part, in the second part, I will show uh, how the polarization domain can be explored as an additional degree of freedom uh, and, and to further boost the performance and also to deal with some uh, issues related to the implementation of rich speed and multiple access. And then the two wish proposes the three uh, schemes exploring uh, from different ways the polarization domain. In the third part, I will uh, discuss the interplay between uh, Red speed in multiple access in intelligent reflect surface. And I will present a very recent uh, a paper 
to uh, publish it in ICC, uh, with hands to uh, provide further gains uh, when compared to the schemes shown in the second part. Actually, uh, it's called enhanced and secret free approach because uh, uh, there are some uh, some features related to the polarization uh, uh, schemes which cannot be mitigated if you cannot customize the environment. So IRS will, will help uh, to provide this kind of mitigation. In the fourth part, the last part, I will discuss some future works and some application scenarios. Okay, so the work principle, the motivation, actually I will try to briefly, uh, I mean, to go very uh, quickly through these slides, since I'm, most of uh, the attendees are already, uh, already know uh, about rich split in multiple access. But I think it's important. It's important to, to motivate why uh, we are going to, to propose a new framework, more flexible framework to deal uh, with uh, massive connectivity, multi-use interference. Why there is this need? So uh, we need to first uh, uh, discuss massive MIMO, since it is one of the key technologies. And it's a uh, key technology of 5G and expect to play a key role behind 5G. And basically the idea is to serve multiple users using uh, simultaneously using a huge number of antennas at the base station. And uh, the main idea is uh, to explore uh, the spatial domain in order to reduce interference at uh, the user side. You have uh, some properties related to massive MIMO, and, but basically what I would like to emphasize is first, we need to design very narrow beams to reduce interference and the interference level should be within the noise level. If it's not the case, it would be very hard to design precoders in order to mitigate the interference. Uh, why? Because the interference is treated as noise. And with the interference is uh, in a very uh, high level, it would be very uh, difficult to mitigate interference. Another, another uh, property related to this setup is related to the errors. So we, uh, the whole process, we needed to estimate the channels. We needed to, to provide some uh, information exchange. And this will be uh, associated to some errors, which means that uh, it's very difficult to estimate perfect the channel. And we needed to find some ways with uh, some techniques which should be robust, which should work uh, under these conditions. When you have uh, channel estimation errors, when uh, we have a setup composed by users under different uh, conditions, uh, heterogeneous news networks. So uh, there is this kind of need and uh, what we should uh, have uh, discussed it, actually we discussed it along the, uh, the years and uh, these uh, kind of uh, discussions we can it's summarized in this very recent paper published in JSEC. It's about uh, the multiple access techniques and about uh, this comparison, orthogonal versus non-orthogonal. Actually, this has been uh, this has been one of uh, the main the main topic of discussions when uh, when researchers uh, try uh, to propose a new idea. And what we need to to know is whether this is the correct uh, the right question. This is, uh, it will fully reflect modern communication design. So this is the first point. Uh, for example, if you see 4G and 5G, it already uses a combination of orthogonal and orthogonal multiplex. We have uh, a combination of OFDMA and SDMA. But even uh, using this combination of orthogonal and orthogonal, 4G and 5G were not robust uh, against the imperfect chain state information. Why? Because uh, there are still some open questions which uh, needs to be addressed, specifically when you, when you discuss and you try to understand the fundamental limits of multi-user, multi-antenna communication with imperfect chain state information, 
these fundamental limits are still unknown. And this created a kind of robustification when 4G and 5G were designed. Which means 4G and 5G were fundamentally designed for perfect chain state information. And since you are dealing with a multi-user multi -user environment, it's very important we have uh, and we know uh, how to address, how to manage multi-use interference. So this should be the real problem. We should focus our discussions on how to manage multi-use interference. And we have, uh, uh, along the years, we have a SDMA with uh, treat interference as noise. And we have an OMAN or orthogonal multiple access with uh, the code interference. But this is a kind of a fixed uh, working principles. And if you go for, to a network, or to a scenario where I, where I have a different needs, different uh, requirements, it should be difficult. We employ a fixed, uh, a fixed strategy to manage multi-use interference. So one idea is instead of fully decode interference, instead of fully treat interference as noise, we could partially decode interference and partially treat interference as noise. There is residual interference. And this will give rise to rate splitting multiple access. So this is where rate speed multiple access will appear in the context. So it will be a more flexible framework, which will be able to deal more efficiently with multi-use interference under different interference regimes in different channel conditions. And it could be seen as a smart combination of both transmit side and receiver side interference cancellation technique. So basically, uh, how it works with splitting, as the, as the name implies, you are going to split the message, split the rates, and the message you are, are splitting of each user into multiple parts, and you call as a common and a private part. And those parts can be decoded, must be decoded at the receiver side. And to, to recover the message, each user needed to to retrieve each part to reconstruct the original message. And when we split the message, this is the key point. Why? Because uh, when you form in the common and the private part, and we are decoded these parts, uh, when you decoded the common part first, it's, it's like we are reducing the interference to a certain level. And then the residual interference, which will be uh, associated to the private part, we can decode it by use SDMA, which means that if you first uh, decode interference to a certain level, we are reducing the interference, and then we can use efficiently SDMA. SDMA is a good strategy, but it works well when the interference is within the noise level. And when it's high, it is not good. And this is the main reason to speed the message. It should provide a more flexible framework that depending on the system and the user conditions, you can uh, reduce the interference to the code to recover the message, or you can keep the interference at its end, which means you do not need uh, to split the message uh, because the interference is already within the noise level. So uh, here are some explanations about the common and the private parts. The common parts are, uh, are not uh, intended to all users, but it must be decoded by all users. And the private parts are independently encoded in some private streams and must be decoded by the intended receiver. And to recover the message, you use successive interference cancellation to separate the common streams from the private streams, which means you are going to decode interference. And the private stream is decoded by treating the other private stream as noise, which means you are treating the residual interference as noise. So look here, uh, we, we, are, we have a two stage uh, for the, uh, recovering the message. First, we use seek to separate the common from the private, which means you are decoding interference, which means we are reducing the interference to the noise level. After this first stage, the residual interference, which means the private streams, will be decoded by treating the other private stream as noise. And if you provide a power allocation for the common and for the private streams, in the sense that we can guarantee the interference will be reduced to the noise level, we'll be uh, able to successfully uh, recover the message at each user. 
So uh, this is an schematic we can find. Uh, you can find uh, at, uh, at this link just uh, to illustrate how the message uh, is split in two parts, uh, considering two users. I will go very quickly through this part because uh, I, I I think this is a, I mean uh, already well known. And but basically here, what you need to have in mind is uh, this uh, power allocation. It it plays a key role in the for the success of uh, the rate splitting design. Why? Because the how much power you should allocate to the common streams and the private streams will define how much interference will be canceled out. And the idea is uh, to allocate power to the common streams in order to guarantee the multi-use interference after the coded process will be treated as noise. So this is the main, the main uh, advice. And then the transmitter and the receiver side, we have here the precoders. You can be linear or nonlinear. And from one, uh, the common methods are combining one common stream. It can be more than one common stream, but here I consider only with splitting. And this is the, the data stream transmitted after linear precoding. So we have the, the common streams and we have the private streams. So basically, uh, this is what has transmitted and to recover as explained to the team interface cancellation will be uh, executed uh, to separate the commons from the private. And then the private streams will be uh, recovered by treating the other private streams as noise. Okay, some more slides, how SDMA and Oman can be seen as a superset of red splitting basically is the way how you are mapping the common from the private streams. So you can see here, uh, all the previous uh, multiple access techniques can be uh, seen as a special case of fluid splitting. And the main message of this first part is, uh, is this one. Actually, SDMA and Enoma are very specifically, uh, are good strategies, but they are specifically designed for uh, some specific conditions. They are not general. They do not, uh, they cannot work well under different channel conditions, under different interference regimes, under different uh, kinds of uh, network, heterogeneous networking, etc. So uh, rate splitting, uh, it comes to unify of them, all of them, which means that it will be, uh, it can be employed in uh, systems with a very weak interference regime strong interference regime, orthogonal channels, aligned channels. So it's more flexible framework and it's hence to, to bridge the two extremes. Uh, and consequently, it will be able to deal more efficiently with the multi-use interference, which is still an issue specifically if you go for a large scale network. Okay, so basically, uh, after this uh, brief introduction, uh, I will going uh, now to show how we can explore the polarization domain in uh, rate split multiple access. Why there is this need? Uh, first of all, let me, uh, I mean, show again uh, one layer rate splitting, how we, it should work and what is uh, one drawback related to its implementation that we can also find in orthogonal multiple access. So as mentioned uh, in the first part, the user message are split in two parts, the common and the uh, private part. The common parts are combined in one or more common symbol. Here I consider one layer red splitting, so to be uh, combined and encoded in one common symbol, the common parts, and the private parts will be independently encoded in private symbols. Then uh, the private symbol and the common symbol will be linearly precoded and transmitted by the multiple antennas to multiple users. And at the users, at the users, each user will receive a superposed data stream. And to recover each message, the its all message, the user will first uh, detect the common stream by treating the private stream as interference. Then uh, successive interface constellation is executed to uh, subtract uh, from the original signal and recover uh, the intended private stream. 
Here, one problem that exists is uh, we have a successive interference constellation uh, inherited to the process. Even if it is executed only one time, it can degrade the performance of rate split in multiple axes. If you see, uh, first, the common streams is always detected with interference. So, which means the data rate is limited by interference. And seek can be executed imperfectly, which will uh, cause residual errors. To have a, this, uh, this drawback related to, to rate speed in multiple access, which means we need to use successive interference constellation to separate the common from the private streams. And then uh, one question that uh, uh, we can ask to ourselves is how can you overcome the issues of successive interference constellation? Once that it can impact negatively the performance of rate speed multiple access. An answer can be found in the polarization domain. And this is uh, where we are going to explore the polarization domain. Uh, the polarization actually polarized antenna arrays are already standard in commercial systems. And it can be seen as a space efficient solution because we can deploy more antennas in the, phase, the same physical dimension. For example, we can build an array with twice the number of antennas in the phase using the identical physical dimension. But in addition to that, antennas with orthogonal polarizations exhibit a local relation, which means we can explore this uh, local relation to provide further multiplexing and diversity gains. And based on this, uh, in the next slides, I'm going to present three dual polarized rate split multiple axis, okay, uh, with a different goal and different features. And these uh, schemes, uh, you can find further information in this paper, it was published in May of this year in TWC. The first strategy, the first strategy, it aims to fully eliminate the need to use successive interference constellation. And basically, instead of using the power domain, uh, this strategy, it will explore the polarization domain. Uh, here is a figure showing uh, the base, base station equipped with uh, multiple pairs of dual polarized antenna arrays. And users also equip it with one pair of dual polarized antenna rate. And instead of, as mentioned, instead of multiplexing the polarization domain, I will assign uh, each stream to one of the polarizations. For simplicity here, I consider the common streams assigned to the vertical polarization, vertical polarized antenna, and the private streams assigned to horizontal polarized antenna. If I do this in, at the receiver side, each user will not receive a superposed data streams, but will receive the data streams in independent polarization, which means that each user can recover the common stream and the private stream directly uh, from the, the polarization, from the uh, polarized antenna, which means uh, do not need to use successive interface cancellation to recover the common streams and the private stream to separate. So using this strategy, I fully eliminate uh, the need of uh, successive interface cancellation. Also, you can decrease the complexity for recovering the message because uh, no need to, to use successive interface cancellation. However, it appears uh, an issue related to polarized uh, systems, which is uh, called as cross pole interference, which means that uh, the common stream, it can reach uh, the receiver side in different polarization. So we need to take in account on this factor when you are going to evaluate uh, how the system will perform. But as we will show in the plots, uh, the cross pole interference will not be harmful as successive interference cancellation. We still have some degradation caused by cross pole interference but it's not to be too high as it is uh, the degradation caused by imperfect to successive interface cancellation. So this is the first strategy. The second strategy, it will not eliminate the use of successive interface cancellation, 
but to explore the polarization diversity, which means that uh, I will transmit replicas of the same signal in the two polarization. In that case, transmitting replicas, I can recover the message at the user side, at the user side through the polarization, which provides the best uh, stream. So uh, in this strategy, I can I do not eliminate successive interface cancellation, but I can explore the diversity. And we ha also have problems related uh, to the seek decoding because I still need to use successive interface cancellation to recover the message. And the cross pole interference is inherent to uh, polarized antenna systems. And also, we have a higher complexity for recovering the message because uh, we need the successive interface constellation. And also, we will, uh, implement a kind of selection combiner to recover the message using the polarization, which provides the best uh, signal. OK, the third strategy, it will explore uh, the polarization, but for, uh, for obtaining multiplex gains. It means that I will not transmit replicas of the same signal, but I will transmit two independent superposed data streams. I mean, two different rate split multiplex signals. And using that, I can provide still a CK required, but I can get some rate gains. Of course, I transmit more information in the same channel at the same time. So I can explore uh, this strategy to get uh, rate gains. But common to the second and the third strategy is the thick process to the interface cancellation. So for these two strategies to perform well, we need to guarantee the imperfection uh, is uh, very low. I mean, the imperfection related to the thick process. If it's uh, a little bit high, the first strategy will provide gains even if you consider uh, reliability or the rate gains. So we have a further gains for the first strategy. It will show in the, in the plots. OK, so uh, to evaluate these three strategies, uh, we, it's considered this uh, system setup. It's composed by a base station uh, with multiple pairs of antennas, a dual polarized antenna and multiple groups and multiple users in a group. And each user is equipped with a pair of dopolarized antenna. And here, uh, and you also assume the users within each group share a common covariance matrix. Actually, the cluster is based on the geographical location. It seems uh, on the likeness of the channel covariance matrix. So we assume they share the same covariance matrix. And the transmission is implemented at two stages. The first stage, we need to design the precoder for group multiplexing, which means we need to separate the users in groups. And after the group multiplexing, we, we serve uh, the multiple users in a group using rate splitting multiplexes. And for that, we need to, to design the precoder for the common symbol and the precoder for the private symbols. Also, the power uh, coefficient for the common and for the private symbols. So this should be designed, and it can be designed in different ways, right? So in the paper, in the in the plots, uh, it's considered a random precoder for the common symbol, and for the private symbol, it's considered a zero forcing precoder. And as a, for the first strategy, in which uh, it's fully eliminated to system interface cancellation, this is the signal transmitted by the base station. And look here, uh, they are transmitted considering their side polarization, the common and the private streams. And the user receives this signal, which means that the common stream is transmitted by the vertical polarized antenna and the private streams by the horizontal polarized antenna. So we have a here the precoders for the common for the common and the private streams. We have a H is the full channel matrix which incorporate not only uh, the desired channel, but also uh, the cross pole interference. You see here the off diagonal, it's uh, the channel vector from uh, polarization I to J, which means the signal arriving in the different polarization. 
So this is uh, measured by the parameter chi. So when the parameter chi is different from zero, it means uh, we have uh, some cross-pole interference affecting the system. If it's zero, there is no cross-pole interference. So we are using these channel metrics to model uh, the cross-pole interference associated to this kind of system setup. So this is for the first strategy. And this is the illustration of the first strategy, how it works actually at the transmitter at the receiver. You see here, basically uh, we are exploring uh, the polarization to transmit uh, the streams and at the receiver side, no need to do to system interface cancellation. We can recover the method directly uh, through the uh, side polarization. The second strategy, uh, it transmits replicas of the same signal, which means that exploring the polarization and diversity. And basically the parameters are the same. And the difference compared to the first strategy, we needed to execute the successive interface cancellation. And also we are uh, implementing a kind of selection diversity to uh, choose uh, the common and the private streams uh, through the uh, uh, polarization, which provides the, the best uh, signal. In the third strategy, uh, I explore in the polarization multiplexing. I transmit two independent data streams. So uh, this is the signal transmitted by the base station, signal received at, by the users. And this is the schematic for uh, this, uh, the transmitter and receiver. You can see here, SIG is still needed as uh, in the second strategy, and you need to Actually, we transmit more streams, so we can explore uh, this uh, functionality to get uh, rate gains to the system because you are transmitting more streams uh, through the same channel. This is a, 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 a comparison uh, related to the complexity. I would say the first strategy is the strategy which has the low complexity uh, at both transmitter and receiver side. And the first, second strategy, it's light, high complex uh, in the receiver side because I need to implement a, a kind of selection combiner. And the third strategy, we have a high complex the transmitter because I transmitting more, I generating more data symbols. So uh, to, uh, uh, to illustrate and to compare the strategies, uh, we use these parameters, okay, for the simulation setup, and basically uh, 100 transmit antennas for special groups, three users per groups. The users are located at the distance. We consider a fixed power location for the common and for the private streams. And the first figure, it, it, it consider uh, the first strategy. What it's interesting to show here uh, is that when there is no cross pole interference, which means the parameter chi is zero, all the curves, it's plotting the outage probability. So all the curves, it uh, converts to zero. It means that uh, uh, we, we, we do not have a saturation in the curves. However, when there is cross-pole interference, the curves start uh, to saturate to a certain level. And this is the point that we needed to fix it uh, because uh, the cross-pole interference, even if I do not, uh, implement successive interface cancellation, the cross pollen interference impact uh, the performance, degrade the performance. And this is uh, what will be, uh, what was uh, accounted in uh, where rich IRS, intelligent reflex surface, we will find applicability in the third part of this talk. So we use uh, intelligent reflex surface to customize this, this the environment in order to polarize the depolarized signal. It means that in order to mitigate this problem caused by the cross pollen interference. So this is for the first strategy, okay? Of course, it's, I, it's plotted for different rates uh, and different parameters just to see the behavior. And as expected, when the cross pollen interference increase, the performance decrease. The second strategy, strategy, we have a common behaviors. Even if uh, there is no cross pole interference and when there is no uh, errors related to successive interface cancellation, all the curves converge, saturate to a given level. Why? Because uh, the second strategy and the third strategy, 
they uh, rely on successive interference cancellation to recover the message. And this is the greatest system. So this is where uh, the first strategy uh, appears as a very potential one uh, to deal of, with this kind of degradation. Okay, so uh, in this figure, it's compared, uh, it's compared all the strategy. It's can be in terms of outage probability. We can see here uh, when there is no uh, error related to stick, uh, the second strategy is the most reliable. It, this is the expected. Why? Because uh, it explores the polarization diversity. So we have a dark blue here for the second strategy. For all the users, it has uh, the best performance. But when there is a kind of, uh, there are some errors related to the seek, the second, the second strat is not the best anymore, except here for the first user. Why? Because the first user is considered a very low target rate. We have some degradation for this first user, but it's not too much. Uh, but because of this uh, selection, we, we choose a very uh, low uh, target rate. But for the second and the third user, you see here the first strategy is the best one. So the first strategy is the most reliable one. Even if I do not explore the polarization diversity, the first strategy is the most reliable. And this figure it plus the sum rate. So the sum rate uh, is expected uh, here, uh, as expected, the third strategy has the, the best gains, I mean, the best performance. But uh, interestingly, in the left side, he, it's showing the second strategy, right? It's showing this second strategy. Why? Uh, because uh, we considered only one of the polarization to, to recover the message. And when you consider only the polarization in the third strategy, it's showing the figure, it has similar performance than this first strategy. Then it's expected when you employ both polarization, the second, third strategy, you have the best performance and you'll be the value will be double of the first one. And this is what is uh, showing this figure. In the, in the second and the right side figure, we, we consider both polarizations in the third strategy. And when there is no error, you see here it's around eight, the outage sum rate and almost double of the, the, the uh, when compared to the first strategy. And of course, when the seek error increase, all these strategies degrades, okay, except the first one, because uh, I do not, uh, we, it's not need to use to see cancellation, which means that uh, even to get uh, rate gains, the third strategy is the most recommended, but as long as uh, the thick uh, arrow is within, uh, is below uh, a given level. If it's higher, for example, in this uh, plot, it's higher than 0 0.25, the first strategy, you have the best sum rate gains. Okay, and to conclude that this part, uh, here, uh, more comparisons uh, among the strategies. And you can see here, uh, depending on their arrow, uh, we can, uh, the, the first part, it will be the best. And especially uh, where, for example, here, uh, we parameter C is the thick arrow. When it's 0 0.1, uh, it degrades a lot the performance. So the first strategy, we have a performance which is not, not affected by the thick arrow. So it's very important to choose uh, which strategy depending on the seek error levels in the cross polar interference also. So some remarks uh, for the second part, it was pro presented three uh, strategies for, uh, for different purpose. The first strategy is full eliminate the use of successive interference cancellation. And because it explore, it, it multiplies the common private message in the polarization domain. Uh, the second strategy is explore the polarization diversity. It's transmit replicas of the day, the, the, the same signal in the two polarization. In the third strategy, it uh, hands to explore the polarization multiplex. It's, it's transmit uh, two independent streams uh, in each polarization. 
And uh, based on the plots, we can conclude uh, the second strategy. It activates the lowest auto -age probability, but the level of seek should be sufficient low. The third strategy, uh, it should be uh, provide uh, the best uh, rate gains, but again, as long as the seek error uh, factor is low and for small uh, SNR values. And I would say the first strategy is, is the most advantageous because it fully eliminates the need of seek, so this is interface cancellation. And this is a, we to motivate uh, the third part where I will, it will show how the intelligent reflect surface can help uh, with speed mode practice in dual polarized antenna system. It means how the cross polar interference can be uh, reduced, can be mitigated. But before showing this, uh, this kind of uh, contribution, uh, let me first uh, motivate the use of rate splitting in, uh, in IRS. I mean, in the same work, why, uh, how one can help each other. So uh, in this paper, it was show uh, three important performance gains. Uh, and these gains were identified as enhanced rate of the common message, robustness to imperfect successive interface constellation, and robustness to imperfect channel state information. So these uh, were considered, uh, were identified, considered the system setup is a very, it's not uh, too general. It's a basic station with four antennas, two users, each user assisted by one IRS at this distance. And uh, the idea is just uh, to, to, to show uh, how uh, red splitting with person in IRS can help and what is the advantage. So uh, I would say uh, in red splitting, we have a problem when we are going uh, to construct uh, the precoder for the common message. Why? Because usually you have a uh, main users with uh, whose message are uh, splitting in common and private. And usually the common parts, they are encoding only one common symbol if you consider one layer rate split. Which means we are using one single precoder to, to encode all the common parts. And, and uh, if you have a different height requirements, it to be very uh, difficult to read uh, the hate requirement to, to all the common message. In that case, if you use IRS, you can assist the common message, uh, the transmission, and we can deliver strong beams and consequently uh, make it the, the common message reaching uh, the, the, the target rate. In this plot is illustrated how uh, this can be activated. So we can see here a red splitting without IRS, both users is not, does not reach the data rate required to decode the common message, but when you employ IRS, uh, the data rate is activated. So this is a kind of, uh, it's a simple plot, but it shows the potential of uh, how IRS can help red splitting multiple access. In the second part, and the second uh, again is related to imperfect successive interface cancellation. This is what I already discussed in the second part, but it will mitigate it using a uh, dual polarized antenna rays. But we can also use uh, intelligent reflex surface. Using intelligent reflex surface, uh, even when there are some errors related uh, to this thick process, we can have GANs and we can provide GANs to the system. And re, uh, regarding rate splitting, rate splitting can help IRS, especially to uh, estimate the channel. This is one of the advantage of rate splitting. Uh, because in IRS, usually you have a nearly passive components, which means the channel estimation is one of the challenges. And since rate splitting multiple access is more robust, uh, especially for imperfect channel state information, we can provide some GANs uh, and help uh, systems assisted by IRS. So this is a plot showing the GANs uh, provided, provided by rate splitting uh, in an IRS assisted system. Either consider perfect change state information and imperfect change state information. You have a, I mean, again, when compared to others, a base lattice strategy, which means when compared to normal and TDMA. 
Okay, so based on this uh, motivation, actually, uh, this is what motivated us to write this paper and was uh, presented in ICC. Uh, we, we, in this paper, we use an IRS in order to customize the system and to mitigate the cross pollen interference. So this, this was, uh, this, this, uh, this was the main goal. How IRS in this system can help. Uh, so uh, this is a brief summary about uh, the motivation and basically the main goal is to uh, mitigate the cross pollen interference that uh, we observed uh, in uh, it's observed in the dual polarized antenna resistance and you consider dual polarized arrest so dual polarized arrest we have uh, actually in addition to the phase and amplitude control we can perform polarization we can change the polarization in different ways you can make a beam splitting, you can convert the polarization. So we, we can set up the refracting elements in the sense that we can generate new signals under with different uh, characteristics. We can split the, the signal in different polarization. You can uh, convert the polarization. So uh, we can make, uh, we can alter uh, the system, the income signal in different ways. And usually uh, in dual polarized IRS, you have a, this block structure reflection matrix. So we have a here, uh, we can see uh, usually the intended transmission is modeled by the diagonal elements, okay? Uh, which means the matrix, we are going to reflect to model the reflections from one polarization to another polarization in the off diagonal. Uh, it's modeling the cross pole interference. And when you use uh, this kind of IRS to mitigate or to minimize the cross pole interference, the idea is uh, to maximize uh, this, uh, to maximize the diagonal uh, elements. I mean, this diagonal should be metrics and to mitigate uh, the, the signals uh, from using uh, this uh, off diagonal, which means the undesirable signals. So uh, this is what uh, we'll be uh, considering. We have uh, the same system setup of the second part. We are, in, uh, uh, we are considering the first strategy, which means we are exploring the polarization domain to transmit the common and the private in a specific polarization. And our, the main goal is uh, to mitigate the cross pollen interference, which means we need to enhance the intended signals. We mean the signals arriving at the right polarization. And we, we have to mitigate the, the polarized signal, which means the signal arriving in the wrong polarization. And this is what needs, uh, it's designed in this paper. It's formulated a um, multi object pro, uh, algorithm to, to, to meet uh, these two uh, two goals simultaneously. Okay, we consider this system model is basically the same of the second part, but the difference actually we are adding one IRS to serve each group, and it's it's uh, it's designing the precoder for the group multiplexing, which means auto precoder and the precoder for the private and the common things. And the system, the users will receive uh, this uh, signal where here we have uh, the link, the, the channel uh, from IRS to users. We have the reflection matrix, the, <coughs> the matrix from the basic station to IRS, the direct link, and then this kind of compact expression we can, uh, we can uh, obtain using this channel decomposition. I will not, uh, I will not uh, provide here the details about uh, step by step, okay, due to, the, due to the talk time, but I'll be happy to answer any question at the end of this talk. And these are the assumptions. The, we consider the links, uh, base station users and base station RS share the common covariance metrics. And you assume that the polarization in the IRS and user link are negligible. You assume the IRS is able to to, to fix the depolarization problem related uh, to the uh, signal propagation. 
Okay, so for optimization, we needed to accomplish simultaneously these uh, two uh, goals, maximize the reception at the correct polarization and mitigate uh, the reception at the wrong polarization. Consider either the private, uh, the, both the private streams and the uh, vertical in the uh, common streams. Okay, this is the simulation setup. We consider a uh, number of antennas, four of eight, eight transmit antennas, four special group, three users per group. So this is the simulation parameters. And uh, yeah, here it show um, this left side and the right side, the difference is the distance between the, the IRS to the user. So in the right side, we place the IRS at certain distance to the users, 10 meters, five meters, one meter. And you can see here, IRS can help uh, to, to, to mitigate the cross poly interference. For example, we see here, even if it's uh, 0 0.1, we do not have a, a big degradation and it's still better when considered uh, with the single polarized MIMO rate splitting, okay? But uh, we have a gap related uh, to this uh, to the per to the performance. On the other hand, if you go uh, see the second the right side figure, we see here regardless the level of cross polar interference, all the curves almost coincide. It means that when the IRS is close to the users, this is the best position. So uh, if you, I mean, to place the IRS, the best strategy is place close to the users. And you see here, all the curves coincide with each other. And in this plot, we compare uh, with the other baseline and just to show, uh, to illustrate uh, the potential gains of uh, IRS uh, with rate splitting. You see here, uh, all the proposed uh, scheme, it outperforms all the other one, previous ones, baseline schemes. And uh, Zeta is uh, when there is error related to the seek, so when it's, there is some error, it means the performance is, uh, is degraded considerably. So this is one of the advantage of uh, the first strategy, which fully eliminates the use of seek, the, the first cancellation. Okay, some remarks. Basically, you explore IRS to enhance the performance of depolarized massive uh, rate splitting multiple access, especially to mitigate the cross poly interference. Finally, uh, the last part, it's about future works and application scenarios. So some future works mostly are related to this presentation. Uh, one is to extend the analysis as soon uh, overlapping of different groups. If you remember, uh, when you model, when you, the system set up, uh, it's assumed that the groups do not overlap with each other. And this is an assumption which in practice may be difficult to find, especially in a, a large scale network with a massive number, massive connectivity. So when the groups overlap, one idea is to go through a hierarchical rate splitting which means uh, you are going uh, to encode the common um, parts, not only in one common symbol, but in more than one common symbol. And going into the, this hierarchical rate splitting strategy, uh, we'll be able to cancel these additional interference uh, coming from this of a group overlapping. Another future work is uh, to consider uh, a more sophisticated power location strategy. Actually, it was considered in all the plots a fixed power location strategy, and it's not always the case. We needed to guarantee uh, the interference level will be within the noise level, and the allocation, power allocation, it plays a crucial role. You should not give more power if it's not needed. So uh, this uh, dynamic power location strategy would be very helpful to further boost the performance. Another uh, future work is related to optimization of the polarization choice. It's considered a fixed assignment, which means uh, the, uh, the common and the private streams were assigned to a specific polarization. And it's, always, it's not always the case. It depends on the condition. 
uh, the, uh, the common could be better to assign to a different polarization. So accounting, considering including the polarization as a uh, as part of uh, the optimization problem, it also help to per, to 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 further boost the performance. Another fit to work is to propose a methodology to smartly shift among the proposed schemes. This is related to the second part. And uh, this is, would be good because we can have a very general framework depending on the channel condition, the level of susceptibility to cancellation errors. Uh, we can, uh, we can sh uh, shift from one to another. It means if you, if you had to have uh, uh, rate gains or uh, you have a more reliable uh, strategy, you can shift from the third to the second, but of course it depends on the uh, the seek error and other points. But it would be good to have uh, this kind of general methodology incorporated in the same platform. Uh, of course, uh, another uh, is about uh, data-driven models. Actually, we have already many 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 works uh, dealing with uh, this kind of analysis, not only to predict the performance metrics, but also, for example, for the power location. For the polarization choice, so it would be good to design uh, data-driven models, especially because we are. I mean, if you analyze a very general, a very complex system setup, going through analytical or model-based uh, approach is a little bit difficult. And uh, yes, another uh, fit works is related to uh, the polarization domain. It's more a general uh, direction to better explore. Uh, in order uh, to get uh, different, I mean, different, uh, different gains. For example, for security, if you want to have a more compact size, improve the capacity. So the polarization domain has a is an additional degree of freedom, which can be better explored to provide further gains, and which includes uh, rate speed multiplexes. Okay, uh, after uh, this part, uh, I just want to conclude uh, by uh, highlight some benefits related to rate speaking. And these uh, you can find in this paper, it's still under review as far as I know, but it's available in the archive uh, where uh, it's, uh, it's discussed some promising scenarios and application focus on these four benefits. Factor efficient, robustness, scalability, flexibility related to rate speed multiplexes. For example, if you consider spectral efficient, one, uh, uh, one application is integrated sensing communication. So uh, uh, we are, I mean, it's one of the hot research talks, integrated sense communication. But uh, the point here is uh, we need to combine the same platform, communication and sensing, and how to manage the interference between communication user and between hardware communication functionality. So we actually in the literature, we have a different approach, but if you look to uh, rate splitting, we can rely on the common streams, not only for managing the user interference, but also to better sense the environment. So the common stream can be used for the joint purpose, to manage multi-user interference, but also to conduct a better radar sensing. Another uh, application is role resolution, DAC, ADC, especially because uh, when you have uh, this kind of uh, a system, the idea is to turn off the antennas with low re resolution quantizers. And when you do that, you are uh, uh, your system starting to, to get overloaded, which means the number of antennas will not be enough to serve the users. And we will incur in some inter inter user interference. In that case, rate speaking will play a key role in mitigating this interuse interference. Robustness. Robustness, we have a different applications. I select this one, millimeter driven terahertz. So uh, we have uh, this, uh, another hot topic is uh, if you go to high frequency, uh, as we know, we the, the channel uh, becomes more, uh, becomes more uh, challenging. Uh, this is because of, uh, we have propagation laws, we have uh, uh, different characteristics, and usually you consider a short distance. 
In one way, yet you get have a good uh, trade-off between uh, power consumption and complexity. It's uh, in performance is going to uh, implement hybrid antenna arrays. So hybrid antenna arrays, which means you are using precoders, digital precoders, and analog phase shifters. Uh, we it's um, it's a good strategy, but it is difficult to estimate the channel. So in that case, in uh, we have rate splitting also play a key role to handle this inter use interference coming from um, this uh, uh, hybrid uh, setup. In other hashto networks is another application, especially here we have mobility, we have a user with different QoS. So the mobility will affect the estimation. So uh, in using red splitting, you, you can provide a more robust uh, uh, framework for the chain estimation, which will be uh, able to deal with errors related uh, to, the, uh, to the estimation process. Scalability in cell-free massive MIMO, we have uh, this example. And um, cell free, basically, we have a massive number of distributed APs, access point connected to a CPU via front hall links. Ideally, there is no interference, but when you increase the number of users, APs, you are going to face scalability issues. And we have a different approaches. One approach is to provide a dynamic AP clustering. But even in that case, uh, it will appear a problem, which is common to collocated massive MIMO. It's related to the pilot contamination. So using red splitting, you can design more properly. Actually, you can design a more, a more efficient uh, technique to deal with uh, this uh, interference caused by the pilot contamination. OK, so uh, this was my last slide. Thank you, everybody, uh, for the attention. And now I open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for the very interesting and super comprehensive talk. Uh, any question from our audience? Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask directly. Well, uh, let's give them some time to think about it. So I, I also have some questions that I would like to ask. Uh, yes. This is indeed very interesting direction of this dual polarization. And yes. uh, one thing I'm uh, very curious is that because I found that for most of the simulation results that you shared, you do not consider this MIMO SDMA as a baseline. Yes, actually we consider in some plots, but uh, not in all the plots, but we consider some plots SDMA and uh, I need to check, uh, but uh, for this, uh, the idea is that you just show uh, the potential uh, of uh, the techniques, but I, I, I think we included, uh, let me share uh, my, uh, but SDMA is included as a baseline, SDMA and NOMA, sure. not in all the plots, but uh, it's very important to compare with SDMA in, but uh, SDMA is a special case of uh, rich speaking. Yeah, so, you're uh, right. It's easier. <laughs> it's just to turn yeah. off. The uh, I'm just curious because, as you mentioned, that this dual polarization actually introduces additional degree of freedom, right? Yes. So for SDMA, I think besides transmitting all the private messages, uh, this uh, additional DOF can actually help them to maybe transmit additional streams. I'm not sure because I don't know how to keep a fair comparison with SDMA in this case. Mm, let me check here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the yeah for for the second part, yeah, we did we didn't compare. Uh, we didn't compare. Yeah, you are right. I need to check the paper. If there is, uh, I didn't include all the plots, but you are right. Okay. Okay, yeah, and uh, as uh, and also one thing that you discussed, uh, you mentioned in the future direction about uh, this multi-layer race splitting, because for this dual polarization, we can utilize different uh, polarization to transmit common and uh, private to get rid of this one layer SIC, uh, one layer seek at the receiver side, right? 
But yes. moving to multiple layers, as you mentioned, at least hierarchical ray splitting, it yes. actually introduces multiple layers as multiple layers thick. So I'm curious yes. whether there are any potential yes. ways that we can deal with these things. Yes, I mean, uh, I didn't start to work on that. Actually, uh, it's it's. I just mentioned this because uh, it was one of the reviewer concerns when you submit the paper about uh, the groups overlapping. And we found, uh, I mean, going through the literature, uh, when you make it more general, rate splitting framework, uh, we are able to deal more efficiently with thermal use interference. But in yeah. that case, you have the dual polarized. You have a depolarization domain. So of course, we need to account for uh, these uh, new uh, antenna setup and to see how we can uh, how we can design uh, this hierarchical rate splitting in a dual polarized antenna array setup. So it's an open problem. Actually, it's uh, I still uh, I didn't work a year actually. Uh, so uh, we we can discuss how we can do okay. it, and it seems to be uh, really promising uh, because. Uh, it would be more practical and more general, the structure, the system setup. But yeah. again, it's a point to be accounted, to be discussed. Yes, thank you. And also one question related to this interference. As you mentioned, this dual polarization will introduce cross-polar interference, right? Yes. And for SEEK, we always know that it introduces this error propagation. So I'm just curious for these two kinds of interference that introduced to the system, which one is actually, you know, more severe? Because I think there might be some trade-off or something. I you mean the interference caused by the seek and the interference caused by the cross-polar interference? Uh, seek cost. Uh, uh, seek cost. Yeah. Uh, the error propagation and also for the uh, cross polar interference. Yeah, actually, uh, this is. Uh, I mean, it, the plots. When I compare the plots, the first strategy it uh, it's affected only by cross polar interference. So, uh, and when I compare with uh, the other strategy. Which uh, is affected by both cross polar interference in successive interpreted constellation errors, we see the first strategy outperform. But if we consider ideal scenarios, which means the mm -hmm. second and the third strategy with no error related to the successive interface constellation, uh, depending on the performance symmetric, uh, the first strategy will be better or not. Why? Because the second strategy explores uh, the polarization diversity. So when I have a ideal scenario with no errors, it will be the most reliable uh, strategy. And the third one, it explores the polarization multiplex. So I would have more uh, uh, higher, I would have higher rate gains. But uh, I would say uh, in terms of uh, which uh, effect impacts more uh, the performance is definitely the successive interface cancellation errors. So uh, this is more impactful and, and it's showing the plots. But of I course, see. the cross policy theory is still degrades. And you, one way to reduce this degradation or to mitigate is to employ intelligent reflect surface. I see. Thank you. Uh, it seems that mm -hmm. we have. Nina, somebody raised the hand. Uh, I do not know how to enunciate the person's name, but uh, I think that person has a doubt. It was in the middle of the talk. Uh, okay. I guess it's Jasu, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, Jasu. Would you like to ask your question at this moment? Hello. Firstly, can you please elevate what are two common and private parts in RSMA transmission? Can you please elaborate it? Uh, Alok, I would invite you to visit the website 
page uh, in the best reading sections, I think in length in many papers it has been discussed. It would be easier for you to grasp the concept there after reading because, you know, to com make it compact and elaborate here in such a, sh such a short time, uh, I don't think it would be possible. And there are okay. previous talks also, which are on the website page, which uh, have different tutorials and talks on RSMA. You can look at them as well. I've shared the link of the website page. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so one uh, last question. Sorry, Daniel, I still have one question. Oh, yes. uh, it's related to about the application because I'm also very interested in the application of race splitting, uh, synergizing with uh, IRS. And yes. uh, you also considered this imperfect uh, channel estimation uh, condition in yes. the system model. So uh, which kind of imperfect imperfection do you consider? I mean, it's only the imperfection from the base station to the user or you assume all the links from base station to reads, reads to user, they are all imperfect. You exactly. Mean, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so which part you consider? Because there are three channels, right? In the IRS assisted uh, system model. Yeah, but do you mean uh, in the plots? Yeah, in the system model that you considered for that uh, application. Yeah, in the plot, I guess on page 20, uh, 62, uh, you mentioned this uh, CSI imperfection. Yeah, the CSI imperfection is uh, related to uh, to the both sides. Actually, both sides. to the yes, to the both sides. And it's it's modeled by a deterministic value in uh, the parameter zeta. Yeah, there is a uh, different ways to model this imperfection, but we consider in the both sides. All right. So you mean from base station to use the list direct link is itself is imperfect, and yes. also from base station yes. to read read yes. to use. Yes. All of exactly. three links are imperfect. I think so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anup, do you have any questions? Yes. On oh, yes. your questioning line as only, in regard to massive MIMO, would it matter that in these plots, at least, that we are operating in a TDD mode or an FTD mode? Sorry? Uh, mean... would, uh, would it matter whether we are operating in a TDD mode or an FDD mode, as in frequency division duplex or time division duplex? As in... Oh the imperfections are modeled in a very general sense on both ends at the transmitter as well as the receiver yeah i i, I, I we operate in the ttd mode okay 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 thank you yeah Okay, so if there is no other question uh i will go i'm going to end this webinar and uh, before the end, I would like to remind our audience uh, the second webinar. It will be held on October 3rd, which is two weeks from today. And we will have Professor Theodos uh, Sipsis from University of C Sicily uh, to give a talk on RSMA. And you can also go to our webinar website for more information. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for thank the you. talk and for your precious time. And thank you all for attending the talk. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Daniel. Bye bye. Bye bye, Lena. Bye bye.